The Abyss, or known as the Void Realm in Genshin Impact. What is it? What does it all entail? And how far does it expand exactly? Does it connect to all the other Hoyoverse games? Does the Abyss directly connect to Conria? And where do characters like Skirk actually come from? And what does it exactly mean? Because the Abyss is such a mysterious entity in itself in Genshin Impact. This is going to be a two-part video as I want to break down the Abyss in its entirety in this video, but also go over Honkai Star Rail and how I think both of these things actually make up Teyvat as a whole. But in order to do that, we gotta break down the Abyss first. So what is it about the Abyss that makes it so ominous? Because it represents the unknown and just a potential looming threat in Teyvat. It's this ominous, never-ending void that is kind of unexplainable. And we know the Abyss Order comes from the Abyss. We know the Abyss, you can enter and leave Teyvat. It's one of the few ways that you actually can. And we know most people within or that come from the Abyss do not take well to the Heavenly Principles, Celestia, and Teyvat's World Order in general. They don't seem to see eye to eye in a lot of things. But in Teyvat, we actually know that there are three realms. We have the Abyss or the Void Realm, we have the Human Realm and the Light Realm. Let's explain it. So, in Teyvat's most primitive prehistoric age, there were only two realms. The Light Realm and the Void Realm, or the Abyss that we know it now. And, as you'd expect, they're like the yin and yang of each other. There's no real right or wrong, good or evil, they're just two sides of a coin. The Abyss, or the Void Realm, and the unworldly power that we see come from it, is directly opposed to the Light Realm the elemental energy that comes from it, like the elemental beings that we see in Teyvat that can harness the elements without a vision or anything like that, like slimes, the dragon sovereigns, they are all part of the light realm. The light realm's elemental currents don't seem to mix well with the darkness of the abyss, hence all the corruption that we see from it. This also holds true to the human realm, which has very close ties to the light realm. Those two are very much intertwined together being that the human realm was created by the primordial one once Teyvat was changed drastically with humans and the human realm altogether. The light and human realms intertwined very closely in tandem and we can see that the void realm doesn't mix well with these other two realms seen as that you can see with all the corruption of the ley lines and the abyssal powers affect beings such as like the Valen, potentially the heavenly principles after Conria. You get the point. It's almost as if if you broke Teyvat down to its most basic principles, you had the yin and yang, the light, and the void realm, and then mixing the human realm once the primordial one actually came and created humans, created Celestia, and defeated the dragons, it sort of threw Teyvat off balance. Hence why there's never been real peace in Teyvat, and why there's always conflict, and why the abyss is always going to be there. So you have your three realms, you have the void realm, and then you have the human and light realms. While the human and light realms are capable of adjusting to accommodate each other's existences like we just talked about, the void realm is devastating to both. But is the abyss an actual entity in itself, or is it just like a gateway like, and it's just this endless void of emptiness and darkness and nothingness? which spawns other creatures, monsters, and other beings. And where exactly do these beings come from? Do they live in the abyss in itself, or is the abyss a sort of a gateway? Prolonged exposure to the abyss can drastically change a person's personality or corrupt their entire being. The abyss appears to be attracted to and draws in those with great ambition, such as Rhyndaughter the Alchemist Gold, Tartalia the Dragon King, and him being from the Light and Dragon Realm and Elemental Realm probably corrupted the shit out of him. Really, if you think about it, being that he's speculated to have caused a lot of what's going on and the big conflict that took place that Apep talked about, and our sibling, who also seems to be corrupt, because she doesn't seem to be acting like herself. But we'll get into that in a second. Those who have personal ties to the Abyss have been known to gain an uncanny ability to wreak havoc and conflict. We also know that time passes differently in the Abyss. Tartalia spent three months in there, but returned to Teyvat, and it had only been three days. Skirk, who is a disciple of the foul Sir Taluji, and has said to have spent pretty well all of her time in the Abyss, she is said to live in another ancient world, or the Dark Realm, or the darkest corners of the universe. In her realm, time flows differently as well from that known in this world. She's not native to Teyvat, 
and we have creatures like the Narwhal who have breached the borders of Tevat through the Abyss. But that still remains the question, is the Abyss a place in itself, this endless place, or is it just really a giant endless gateway to everywhere else, like our own universe or space? And is this connected to all the other universes in Genshin, such as Honkai Star Rail and so on and so forth? If you think about it in an interesting way, the Abyss sort of seems more like a giant black hole. And much in our own world, we can't really explain these things 100% because they're just such an anomaly. It's much less like we're traveling in space like they do in Hongai Star Rail to different worlds and stuff, but much rather you're going to little pocket universes or who really knows? Because like a black hole, it's unexplainable. But it explains the weirdness, the corruption, the time travel, the way time works differently and how you're able just to jump in and out of universes and worlds and breach their borders unexplainably. Because if you think of Teyvat like a bubble universe or like a bubble world, it sort of does seem like that. You got Celestia, the Heavenly Principles, you got the Seven Nations with the Archons, and anyone that's not native to Teyvat is considered Descenders or just otherworldly beings, such as like monsters that have been spawned from the Abyss, the Abyss Order, and so on. It makes sense why none of them are compatible with the beings from the Light Realm or the Human Realm. Plus, we know that the Abyss Order and Conria have massive ties and are linked to each other, so for the Abyss Order and the Abyss to be directly opposed to the Heavenly Principles in Teyvat and its Light slash Human Realms in general just makes complete sense. And not even just like a good versus evil, but just a perfect balance of yin and yang until you introduce the Human Realm and this throws this completely off balance. The Light Realm is the origin of pure elemental beings and energy that flows those elemental currents. It is also much more compatible, like I said, to the human realm than the void realm is. I'm not sure if this light realm is another entity in itself that you can travel through, but I'm wondering if Ether and Lumine came from the light realm, as Lumine means light and Ether means personification of the bright upper sky. This is also sort of described in The Pale Princess and the Six Pygmies, that book we got way back in Lisa's story quest when the game first came out. Could be talking about the light realm, the princess from the kingdom of light can make plants grow and make people in the land of night stronger. This is very similar to the traveler's purification abilities like we've seen with the Valen. And none of these are compatible with the void realm that has dark currents, which is very similar to the light realm's elemental currents and the human realm's ley lines. The power of the void realm is like a curse. It is highly dangerous to both pure elemental beings like Ventine de Valen, as they've been poisoned by it from Durin's blood, and dangerous to humans as well. And because we know that our Abyss sibling is now the Abyssal Princess, I am wondering, like we talked about, if her personality was also altered or changed as we know corruption can do this from the Abyss to two beings from the Light Realm. It is also interesting that the Dark Sea and Ankonomia is the one place in Teyvat that we know of that actually is a conjunction of all three realms. But the question remains, is the Abyss the enemy? Is it the bad guy, quote unquote, in this game? Or was it just left out? Because Celestia holds dominion over the Light and Human Realms who are in tandem with each other. Was the Void Realm or Abyss the odd man out? And is this the cause of pretty much every conflict, or at least the basis of every conflict in Teyvat's entire history? Karnria is located in the Abyss, or at least it's heavily hinted that it is. I mean, besides the fact that Karnrians are part of the Abyssal Order, they're linked in almost every way possible, their goals align, both don't get along with Celestia. Albedo even describes Karnria as being its own underground realm kind of like just like the abyss is described so i do believe conria was either on the border of the abyss or actually in the abyss in some way or form which if that's the case is kind of like conria and humans living in conria that maybe seek the guidance of conria and the abyss and the void realm over the celestia and the light realm its own little kingdom in Teyvat living alongside the light and the human realms and I guess naturally they can't coexist or at least peacefully. It's kind of almost sad to think about it that way. Civilization and elemental beings, humans and nations in Teyvat are just ruled under the dominion of the light and human realms and Conria is literally just the representation of a civilization under the void realm or abyss and just trying to carve out its own existence in this world of Teyvat. It's kind of sad to think about when you view it like that, but that's precisely the problem. 
We've seen that the Abyss and what it can do, it's corruption to even powerful beings like the Valen, different gods and entities in Teyvat, so imagine what it does to humans. And humans that are native to Teyvat or were created in Teyvat are probably also not compatible with the Abyss. That's why I think Skirk is a much different type of character than like the Abyss Order or even like Conrians. You see the Conrians and the Abyss Order probably have a lot in common, but yet they don't seem to see eye to eye in a lot of things like Danesliff and Kaya don't really seem to get along with the Abyss Order despite the fact that they originate from Conria and they both dislike the Heavenly Principles. So you'd think they would get along. But this probably boils more down to the fact that they that they don't trust Jane's lift. He must have done something that they felt betrayed. But why is Skirk so vastly different? Well, I think it's easy to say because I think she is genuinely from the Abyss. She's not from Teyvat. She's from outside of Teyvat. So I don't think she's corrupted by the Abyss or affected in any way because she's probably from the Abyss and the darkest corners of the universe like it's stated. Whereas people from Teyvat are affected much differently. I mean Tartalia who was Ajax as a young boy fell into the Abyss and he only spent three months in there and look how vastly different he was changed. He was this bloodthirsty warrior and he was formerly a timid boy. His family almost didn't even recognize how much he had changed. So imagine like spending 500 years in there. The lingering effects of the abyss and the void realm is important, especially in my next video when we're going to be talking about Honkai Star Rail and how that connects to Genshin Impact or at least some different connections I can make. But that is just a baseline for different beings from the abyss and how it affects them differently and why I think Skirk is an anomaly in this case and probably aren't meant to have long exposures, let alone build a civilization that will eventually cause a cataclysm in Teyvat, releasing a ton of monsters and just an overall catastrophe. But the part that confuses me is how does the traveling factor in? Is the void realm just this endless entity of space and just void and emptiness that you can travel through and like has little pockets that you can just rift in and out of like black holes and just pop in and out of any point in time or any location in the universe. We do have hints of its nature here and there, but for the most part, our description of the Abyss is in the form of the Abyss Order, a faction in the Abyss, or Rhine Daughter, the Alchemist Gold's creations. Our knowledge of the Abyss only really hails from stuff related to Teyvat, which is fair because, you know, we are playing a game that's stories based in Teyvat, with a few exceptions like Skirk, who is a very mysterious character, and we have no idea her true intentions. But with the existence of Skirk and other characters like this, it sort of confirms that there are countless other worlds connected to the Abyss and Teyvat. Don't have any clue what those other worlds are like. We don't even know if you can access these worlds through the Light Realm as well. Or if it's just the Void Realm. But one thing we can confirm for the most part at least is our sibling, the other Traveler, is not compatible with the Void Realm. And like I theorize is probably from the Light Realm, hence why in the Battle Pass trailer in the Six Pygmies book, they tease this corruption and the light realm itself is sort of a mystery because we know little to nothing about that either we do know that it's the origin of all pure primordial elemental beings the most prominent inhabitants of this realm are the bishops and their elemental lords the sovereigns and honestly i'm wondering if all elemental beings that don't require a vision originate or at least have ancestors from the light realm how the Light Realm works exactly, does it work similar to the Void Realm or the Abyss? Can visitors come and go? Can you travel through it? That we don't know. It is directly opposed to the Void Realm, and if the Void Realm can do this and they're polar opposites, I don't see why not. So the Traveler could also travel while still being from the Light Realm. This would also explain if it's the Realm of the Elements, why the Traveler can actually harness all elements, being from the light realm but also being a descender and not from this world and having otherworldly powers so although bishops come from the light realm perhaps like the abyss outsiders can also come from this realm as well maybe skirk is just the void realms version of like the traveler just a visitor that explores other worlds and what's even more interesting to me yet is that we know that Nubilet is a dragon sovereign, clearly from the Light Realm and the Elemental Realm, whereas Skirk is from the Void Realm, and yet these two have no hostility towards each other. As a matter of fact, they seem to get along quite well. 
that might seem odd considering all we've talked about so far, but really it's not. You know, just because they're opposed from different realms and beings doesn't mean that they're necessarily in conflict. All beings that seem to have bad blood and cause a lot of chaos, conflict, and catastrophe are beings that were from either the light or human realms, dabbled into the abyss or void realm, and was corrupted. But beings like Skirk that are originate from the actual void realm, or from wherever they're from, they don't have hostility, at least that we know of. I guess you could say the All Devouring Narwhal did attack Teyvat, but I feel like that's more of a, you know, your dog got off the leash type scenario, rather than a really orchestrated planned attack, because we don't know for sure, and I don't know Skirk or Sertaluji's intentions, but they didn't seem hostile to me. And as for the Cataclysm, well, unleashing a lot of abyssal monsters into the light slash human realm was a bad idea, because they just don't mix. And if you think about the heavenly principles and how terrible they've been for the last little while, ever since a primordial one was defeated or corrupted, this conflict is heavily speculated to have happened with the Dragon King Nibelong, whether it was a threesome or a 1v1 we don't know, but it shattered the world in the heavens, perhaps in this conflict, Nibelong returning from outside of Teyvat and the Abyss, corrupted, and that corruption spread onto whoever is the current Heavenly Principles, and now they're just terrible, either by choice or not. It does seem to alter beings, no matter how powerful they are. Look at Devalin attacking Mondstadt, he's one of the four winds. He was acting out of character. I do think this plays a big part, and why the Primordial One created the Human Realm, came to Teyvat at all, that's going to be the main topic for my next video. Don't you find it interesting that the Primordial One came to Teyvat when there was only dragons and bishops here, and created humanity in the Human Realm? So that means that they descended, they came from somewhere else that had humans already, or people just like humans. And this is where Honkai Star Rail factors in. Because we've all been playing Genshin Impact long enough to know that reoccurring themes in the game are how the Void Realm and Celestia don't get along, Celestia does not like forbidden knowledge, knowledge that is forbidden, we hear all of this stuff about the false guy in the fake world, we've heard this over and over again, all of these terms we're gonna break down in my next video, I'm gonna be covering why I believe Honkai Star Rail plays a key part in the creation of Teyvat in its entirety, and how the Abyss factors in. Because we know in Honkai Star Rail, you can go on the Astral Express, you can explore different worlds, that's kind of the premise of the whole game, it takes place in space. I'm not going to get into it in this video, I'm going to wrap it up because I do want to talk about that in the next video. The Void Realm and Honkai Star Rail kind of go hand in hand for what I believe was the foundation and creation of Teyvat to begin with. For those of you that play that game, you'll know exactly what I mean. There are literal characters that go from world to world and try to save it. I'm not going to get into detail, I don't want to spoil anything. Stay tuned for that video though, if you want to see it, that's going to be my next video. But on that note, I hope you guys enjoyed, I hope this did help and clear some of the misconceptions about the Abyss. And I do apologize if I left you with more questions and answers, but the Abyss in its entirety is a really hard topic to discuss because we know so little about it and what it all entails. It's so vague and it's just very ambiguous force in Genshin. But it's a reoccurring place with a lot of different characters and important pieces to the puzzle of Teyvat's story. And I do think the Abyss also plays an important part in the future of Genshin Impact once Teyvat's story wraps up. Because that is a primary way that people come in and out of Teyvat and other places. So we might actually get to see some of these other places eventually in, you know, once we wrap up in Teyvat, or maybe even sooner. Who knows? But thank you for watching, I hope you guys are having a great holidays, hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, we will see you all in the next one. Later.